done heard, well not all, a lot of y'all, some of y'all done heard how the Israelites talk about how this heritage is a speckled bird, and all this, that, there, and the other, and they tell you that talk about skin tone. Lord will, we'll get to see what it's talking about today. If the Lord see fit, we'll see what it's talking about today. Matter of fact, before we read that, give me, we're going to look at Hosea chapter 12, verse 10 first. And then John 6 and 44. Uh, uh, uh. Hosea 12 and 10. I have also spoken about the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So we already know that this man that came through to use similitudes by the ministry of his prophets and multiplied the visions for the testimony of Yahshua. So let's look at John 6 and 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that have heard and have learned of the Father, come to me, come unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believe on me have everlasting life. And that's what we're seeking to do is to believe on the Son that we might have everlasting life, to be taught of God and come unto Him. So now let's look at Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1. The mouth said, that's your speakerphone. You ain't got to talk now, so you can take it off. Jeremiah 12 and 1. Righteous art thou, O Yah, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root, they grow, yea, they may bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. But thou, O Yah, know me, thou hast seen me, and has tried mine heart towards thee, pull them out like sheep for the slaughter, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. So now he sit back and look at it. He said he planted them, and he going to prepare them for the day of slaughter. Come on over here to Matthew 13, real fast. We'll deal with why he said the way of the wicked prosper, and they deal very treacherously. A lot of times we look at stuff, man, and we wonder why these people do. I mean, just some of the people we just referenced, some of these celebrities and all this stuff. These people living wicked, and it seems like they just get more and more and more. And we can't understand. We living, we supposed to be living righteous, but yet we don't get nothing. Because you're looking to get something later. See, a lot of times you want something right now. Matthew 13 and 24. See, a lot of stuff, you want it right now. And when you don't get it right then, you don't know how to react and act. So let's sit back and look at it. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which so another parable put forth, put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man with so good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then he appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did thou not know thou so good seed in thy field, for whence then it have tares? He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let us let both grow together until the harvest. In the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Go ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So now we drop down to verse 36. He said they were both planted together. He said, Go on here and let them stay there till the time to do it at the end. So verse 37 He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The seed, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Who knows where we could take this back into the law? Who knows where we could take that back into the law? 
Genesis what? So when we sit back and we look at this man say that there shall be, let's go on and look at it. I didn't intend to go here to look at it, but you know what, what our brother here was talking with somebody about that and these niggas missed it. So let's look at Genesis 3 and 15. Let's see what it's. Because we sit back and he said that this year, we, we sit back seeing this same thing, hatred between the two. Yeah, right. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So you know you sit back and you see this hatred between these two seeds, the son of the kingdom and the sons of the wicked one, which takes us back to what apostle? Y'all come back to Matthew 13. And it takes us back to what apostle? He just said that, take, he just sat back and seen this man say that, that the children of, what, yeah, what apostle, what epistle letter does this take us back to? What, what, which apostle wrote us a epistle letter telling us about the field is the world, the good seed are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one? Who told us about that? Mm -mm. What apostle told us about that? Didn't the apostle John tell us about those that commit sin or the devil? He that is born of God don't commit sin. And, 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 th and this we know the sons of God and the sons of the devil. So, and a John, 1 John 3, starting about verse 4, working all the way to 10. So, so when we sit back and we look at this, and this is why we mentioned what we were talking about earlier. This is why we were mentioning what we were talking about earlier. There has to be a difference. Because he said the people dealt treacherously with him. And why do the wicked prosper in their way? Now we sit back looking at, when we walk, go over here to Jeremiah chapter 3. Yes, it was 1 John, right? Jeremiah 3 and 21. Might be 20. Jeremiah 3 and 21. Might be 20. Like I finally got uh, actual verse right. Yeah, the verse all you know. Jeremiah 3 and 20. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what is that? Listen to what he says. Surely as a wife tre treacherously depart from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, say of Yah? A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping the supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten Yah their God. Return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. We come unto thee, for thou art Yah our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in Yah our God is salvation is the salvation of Israel. Now sit back and you look at something. Hold on. I'm going to keep going. For shame have devoured the labor of our fathers. From our youth, their flocks and their herds and their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame and our confusion cover, our, cover us. For we have sinned against you our God, we and our fathers from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of you our God. Now let me sit back and look at son. How did this wife treacherously depart from her husband? Who knows how his wife treacherously departed from her husband? Because we already sat back and seen in Jeremiah chapter twelve that he said that these men dealt very treacherously. They felt like they were they were they felt they were blessed and happy in their treachery. So how did Israel treacherously depart from her husband? Yep, that one there too. But that ain't what we're looking for right now. Paul and then you other gentlemen got an idea. You got an idea. They plotted against him. They plotted against him. How did we got to sit back there? Then they say we have no king but Caesar. You say you done committed adultery. You done went and laid with somebody else. Come on now, let's sit back and look at this John chapter 11, verse 45 one time. See if they want to deal treacherously with their husband by departing. John 11 and 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen these things which Yahshua did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them the things, what things Yahshua had done. Then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees a council and said, What do we? 
For this man do many miracles. If we thus let him alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away our place and nation. And then we know Cappius began to prophesy. And then look at verse 53. And then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. But let's see how they per they treacherously because to depart from somebody, what it mean to depart? To leave. And what did they say when they put this? And what did they say when they put this man on the cross? Let's see. John chapter 19, verse 13. Let's see what happens. Hold on. Before we even look at that. Hold on. Get, let's go look at Isaiah 54 and 5 first. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's look at that first. Let's get an understanding first. We're going to deal with that speckle verb. We got a whole bunch of stuff to look at. I got some extra stuff. I want to deal with some one thing. I might even not even get to it. I got some extra stuff. Stuff to be coming to mind. Verse 5 of the 54th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. For thy maker is thine husband. Yah of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Kodesh one of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. So when we come over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So that means Yahshua was our husband, right? We were married unto him. So when we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we look at verse 1, he said, Would to God you would bear with me a little in my folly, indeed bear with me. See, now they try to see this is how these niggas try to play their game. Because to be folly meaning foolishness, right? That's what folly mean, right? Somebody being foolish, right? And now these niggas will turn around and see, see, Paul was a fool. But then we have to remember, as it happened to the fool, even so it happened to me. That we all fools for the Messiah's sake. I seen the foolish taking take root in the earth. So somebody, that's why he said that, how about you bear with me and my foolishness, because we consider to be fools to follow the living God. But everybody got something they want to say against an apostle of God, taught by revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. Nigga can't even count the twenty. Yeah, early in, the, early in the morning. That means you went to bed hating on this man. Went to bed knowing you. No, I don't know nothing about They don't know nothing about this book. Nigga barely know himself. Look at verse 2 though. For I'm jealous over you with the God of jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to the Messiah. And we know all these parables this man gave about a bridegroom, right? You know what I'm saying, right? And a wedding feet. So when we come back to John chapter 19, verse 13. Because we dealt treacherously with our husband. We departed from him. This Israel as the people departing from her husband. He said the people dealt treacherously and they were happy. When Pilate therefore had heard the saying, he brought forth, he brought Yahshua forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the pavement. On two sides of the but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him. Remember king because Israel means as a prince. A prince is a ruler. And what would a ruler be? But a king. Away with him. Away with him. Pilate said unto Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. They departed treacherously from their husband. Mm -mm -mm. That's early right now. So you sit back. Come back to Jeremiah chapter 3. So you sit back and you look at all these Israelites talking trash. You departed from your husband. You's a treacherous nigga. You know you can't you know you can't listen to nobody treacherous. That's why I told I told the women this. I ain't tell it to the men. This is just me. I would like this from my youth. If I'm with a woman and she cheat on me, I'm done with her. Straight up. You ain't got no opportunity to come back and do it again. You know what I'm talking about? You ain't got no opportunity to come back. Some people can take it how they want to take it. You ain't finna be laying up sleeping on. What well, they say, I ain't never thought you spread like mustard. You ain't finna be around here sleeping with every, any and every man got me around here looking stupid. There's a lot of things I ain't never been willing to do. I ain't fighting over no woman. I ain't. I definitely ain't fighting over community vagina. Yeah, I can't even sit back. But we got to sit back and look at, thank the Lord. He don't think how I think. Because Israel had community vagina. He loved her enough to die for her. And take a bite, and have, and and resonated in his mind from the foundation of the world that he was willing to do that. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm a love a whole that much. I'm not even tell you that a lot. I'm good. I'm not the Lord. I'm not the Lord. 
Me coming to do that not going to redeem your sin. You spread your legs on me with another nigga. You let that nigga take care of you and all your problems that come along with you. That's real. Y'all women, some of y'all women are probably looking like that messed up. Women can get past that. You say what you want. If I was with you and you got it in your mind, you want to go sleep with another nigga, you go stay with that nigga. Straight up. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's real now. Now, I, I could go in a whole other different direction dealing with the love of God on that, and I've done it before in time past. But I'm talking about me as a man. You know what I'm talking about? If I was with a woman, and you done slept with other niggas while I'm with you, I'm straight. All I got to do is find out you did it one time. You stinking whore, don't you never come back around here. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. And I would look at it this way. If I was sleeping around on you, you supposed to turn around and look at me and be like, nigga, don't you never come back around here. You supposed to love and value yourself enough to say, I won't accept nor tolerate that type of treatment. I'm talking about that go both ways. You women should look at it. Y'all shouldn't be with no man let that man sleep around on you like that. You supposed to look at that man and love and value yourself enough to say, you know what, I deserve better than that. I'm not finna let, I'm not finna be with you and you treat me like that, disrespecting me like that. I look at it this way. That's not a mistake. You go sleep, sleep with somebody else. That was a conscious choice and decision that you made. And I'm going to make a conscious choice and decision that you need to go be with that man. Straight up. Nigga be like, I'll take your old lady. I say, if you could take it, you can have it. She wasn't mine in the first place. And I ain't going to argue with you about it. I ain't going to get in no heated discussion. I ain't going to raise my voice. I'm going to just look at you take that hoe with you. Straight up. Because if you with me, you sleep with somebody else. That's all you can be is but a whore. Can't be no virtual woman, can't be no good woman doing that. I would respect you more if you came to me and say, you know what? I don't think this is going to work out. It better so that we go our own separate ways. Because I think I want to be with somebody else. I can respect you doing that more than being with me and going and mess with somebody else. Just say this ain't what you want no more and go your way and then mess with who you want to mess with. What y'all say? Ain't y'all trying to think that's the better course of action? Then to sit up there laying up next to somebody, kissing them all in the mouth. No, you just put your, just had this man penis in your mouth. You going to come kiss me in the mouth. Now I got this bad babies all in my mouth. <coughs> Nigga been around here tossing y'all around the bathroom, all around the house. You want to come up and lay up to me smelling like sex. I'm straight, man. We'll never come back around here no more. That's just me. Y'all do what you want. So we look at verse 21. When he said a voice was heard upon the high places weeping and supplications, because they perverted the way and forgot y'all, where was this weeping being heard in the high places? Where they were crying at? What is re referring to them crying? Not when the disciples were mourning. What were they weeping? When you sit back in the high place, we in Jerusalem. Ain't no high place to that, is it? Did he say shame cut them? He said, for the shame have devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1, by verse 15. I know I can say some stuff sound real hard and rough. But uh, I think Pastor told me this the other day. I ain't got no filter. Like she was posting that video dude trying to act like his old lady food tasted good. I wish you would cook me some nasty food. Bet I look in your face tell you I don't like this. I ain't going to tell you I like it because it make you feel better about yourself. I'm going to tell you, man, this was disgusting. How dare you even serve this to me? You knew it was nasty before you put it on the plate. Look at it. You seen that wasn't appealing. You won't eat it. That's the part that killed me. A woman who can't cook, cook some nasty stuff, she ain't got no plate. And you got the plate in front of me looking at me like, I wonder if he gonna like it or not. And I'm sitting back looking at, why she ain't got no plate? I'm for real, man. I'm what I'm wondering. Why you ain't, where your plate at? Oh, I'm not hungry, baby. So what? Oh, if you ain't hungry, what you put in the food? I'm straight. First Peter 1 and 14. I'm straight. Y'all sit back and look at me like crazy for a I'm just telling you. I'm straight. Don't be fixing me no fool. You ain't got no plate. First Peter 1 and 14. How many of y'all have been around a woman fix you something she ain't had no plate? She's sitting there looking at you. You wonder what? They say you wonder where your plate And if you was in that situation, how many times was the food nasty? How many of y'all, how many, how many of y'all women done, huh? Mm -hmm. You been forcing, how many of y'all women cook the plate for, cook, cook some food for a man and you ain't had no plate because you knew the food was nasty? Who gonna be honest and tell the truth? 
It's all right if the fool next. I'm going to tell y'all something. I say this here, now this in my mind. Because my, my little sister did it and my cousin did it. For some of y'all that know you can't cook, man, do you know you want to be married? Man, go on in there, man. They got recipes everywhere. You got the internet. Man, go in there and try stuff. Get out your comfort zone. Try some new stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Nicole already know. I just told her this the other day. You better not there cook me the same thing every day. You got pillars too? Pillars. <laughs> Whatever you call it. I don't know what they call it. Pillars. <laughs> Pinterest, whatever they call it. You got pillars too? You know what I'm talking about? They got food network. I'm telling you, man, my cousin cook, couldn't cook nothing. In my life, in my life, she couldn't cook nothing. My mom, when my auntie died, she left her some grade A pots and pans. Them things probably had dust on them by the time she got married. She never used them. But when she seen she wanted to marry Rob, she had it in her mind. My cousin say, I got to learn how to cook. Now she can hold on. Now she can hold on. Now. She ain't no slouch now. You done came to me about eight years ago talking about how she can make a roast and do this here. I said, you like She was looking a little mother, nigga. She made some bread, nigga. I thought she bought it. See, what she was a, hey, I ain't mad at her for being a finish. Talk about what you mean, bro. I made this with my own hands. I said, well, shoot, you can go sell that bread. That bread was good. I ain't just saying that because I have my sauce. Then I said, where you bought it from? Yeah. I really thought she bought that from Publix or something. You both was the same. I can't blame you. Shoot. Hey, and guess what? I wouldn't mind paying away the 10% because I really thought she had done cop that from somewhere. Man, you would came to me three, four years ago talking about little motherfucker be in the kitchen making her, her own bread. I wouldn't have thought that. They give you that too. I would be trying to push it back some. But you know what I'm talking about? But for y'all women, y'all know y'all cooking. All y'all do, man, practice literally do make perfect. But you're not going to be able to know what you can and can't cook unless you go in there and get out your comfort zone. You know what I'm talking about? You got to try something. Hey, you might mess something up every now and then. You just have to bear with it being nasty. But if you keep on doing it after a while, you'll get good. Because I already told the coach, mess around here. Yeah, I like to eat chicken breasts all the time. I live away. Come in there and cook me that all the time see what happens. Yeah, I like beef. I like to eat hamburgers all the time. You better get, you better get inventive with it. I come in here, you make me spaghetti every night, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem. Nigga, I just ate this yesterday. And this ain't leftovers. You know what I'm talking about? I'm glad though. My old lady don't. My old lady like fresh vegetables. Like I like fresh vegetables. I got that from my from my sister. She the first one got me eating asparagus. You know what I'm saying? Eating all manner of vegetables. I ain't never eat brown rice. All type of stuff. You know what I'm talking about? So yeah, it is. So I already know she ain't gonna. If if I buy vegetables and they ain't already made, they gonna be in the freezer. I don't like canned stuff because they see all that stuff being in them cans. You know what I'm talking about? That BPH, all that good stuff. So you know what I'm talking about? But I'm telling y'all women though, I'm asking these women a question. How many of y'all can cook? I'm talking about be honest. How many know your skills is up to par? Like you wouldn't there. If somebody say, man, come over here and cook, you already know you're going to hold it down. Ain't no shame in saying your skills ain't up to par. I'm telling you, ain't no shame in that. When your skills wasn't up to par, was you shame to say it? Ain't no shame in that. Ain't none of them saying, no, I can't cook too well. Ain't no shame in that. The shame come in that where you just say, I'm just not going to cook well. And I'm just content. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm telling you, I'm sitting there telling you, I grew up with two people couldn't cook. My cousin couldn't cook nothing. And the world part is, her husband ain't no slide too. I ain't been around there to get on some of that brisket. One of these days, I got to slide around. I keep hearing about that brisket. I got to get me some. You done had some of that brisket? I keep hearing about it. I got to get me some. They say, Rob, don't even play with that brisket. I got to get around that for First Peter 1 and 13, though. He said, well, for a girl up the, lo the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance, but as he which called you is Kodesh, so be ye Kodesh in all manner of behavior. Because it is written, be ye Kodesh, for I am Kodesh. I was just talking with my man Qua about this last night, because we were talking about music. Man, some of y'all got to be careful. I know some of y'all still probably listen to worldly artists and watch some TV show you shouldn't be watching. Probably do a lot of that stuff. Man, leave some of that stuff alone and let it go. I just be tripping. I be seeing dude talking about, I just, listen, I seen nigga going on talking about they listening to J. Cole. They in the word. What type of nigga called to be in the word? Care what J. Cole. Some of y'all could mention songs. You done been rhyming with lyrics and stuff. I don't even know where it come from. I would ride over with T in the month. She said something about Chrisette Michelle. I didn't even know who that was. 
I didn't even know who that was. And the worst part is, she said it like I was supposed to know who it was. I'm like, I don't know who that is. I don't even know. I don't even know who Kate Michelle is. All I know is I hear people talk about it. I ain't never heard a song from Kendrick Lamar. I don't even know nothing about it. Only reason I seen who Bobby Smurda walk out of flipping channels and seen him. I don't even know none of his music. I don't know nothing about it. I wouldn't even know who Chief Keith was if I didn't see dudes going off about how garbage he was. I had no idea who he was. And, like and the reason why, because I don't listen to this music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't I'm not I don't I don't know who these people are. I don't listen to the radio. You know what I'm talking about? I don't watch BET. I'm not watching no videos. I'm not on no iHeart radio. Y'all know y'all ain't got no business messing with Pandora, because that Pandora's box. Go look it up after the Sabbath in Greek mythology, what Pandora's box is. Bet you won't get on Pandora no more. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, though. Like, so it's a lot of stuff. Man, I just, it would've was, yeah, I would tell you, like, this uh, girl I grew up with, or came up with, I'm older, I'm, I'm much older, I'm about good 10, 11, 12 years old now. She said something, she would quote your guy. I didn't know she would quote your guy. I thought she was saying her own words. I'm like, well, go ahead and tell them then. Oh, these niggas want to be a star. She was like, got it told him. I said, oh, I didn't know that. I told, I told her, I said, Pam, I'm lame to the game. I ain't, I don't know, I ain't heard none of these records. I don't know nothing about them. When, when we were talking about Papa Mine, I swear, I didn't know where that was coming from. I just heard a nigga say it. I ain't know who said it, what song it came from, or nothing. I said, now I know how the 50, 60 year old people feel. I don't know what all this stuff these young kids be living to. Y'all should be the same way. It should come a time and place. Y'all shouldn't even desire listening to the same music you used to listen to. Read why I say that, because y'all got to be careful. I'll be telling Tina she think I just be messing with her. But I'll be telling her this for a reason. Because I knew when we were young, listening to the records, me and Quad were talking about it last night. Like Biggie had a song, uh, Victory. Came out right after he died. It was on, on Puffy album, No Way Out. On the record, he said, I'm the son of Satan. My killer's too blatant. Jay-Z once said on the song, On Reasonable Doubt, On The Evils. He said, we never prayed to God. We prayed to God eat. You know what I'm talking about? They would say stuff. But when we were young, we would be like, boy, that nigga sick with it. Did you hear what he said? But it was one thing Pop said. That man said, man, just don't listen. Bob your head to the beat. Listen to the words. Listen to what they saying. That stuff we didn't do when we were 16, 17, 18 years old, 20 years old, vibing to these dudes' records. We weren't listening to what they were saying. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? We just vibing with it, and when dudes would say certain things in their raps, nigga wouldn't sit back and be offended at what he said. Then nigga be like this here, man, that nigga sick with it. Nigga be reciting it right, wrong, well. This nigga being on the record saying he the son of the devil. Nigga reciting it right along with it. We ain't even clicking in our mind. Did you hear what this nigga just said? This nigga Biggie said he on a song, he had a homeboy that would kidnap kids and hit them in the booty and throw them off of a bridge. You know what I'm talking about? And a nigga will recite that right. Any one of y'all who came up in that area, y'all know what song that is all right after death when he said that? He said, don't you know my nigga gonna kidnap kids? Hit him in the booty, throw him over the bridge. Straight up, that's what that nigga said in the record. Nigga sit back and look at that. Nigga, you got a homeboy hitting little kids in the booty? <laughs> what y'all got going on? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And I'm talking about... I can't even, I know so many songs from so many rappers, man, that if I sat back and just recycled some of the stuff these niggas, that nigga Starface had a song where he said, I don't want your money, I want your life. You know what I'm talking about? And that's how the hook went. Don't want no money. And they say, I want your life. Nigga talk about killing a nigga. You got niggas ain't gonna step on a roast for them cross they sandwich singing this long with this hip. No, they ain't gonna kill nobody. You did rap and you wonder why and you know why they kid and you wonder why they kid crazy. Look at all these women got all these songs with some of you women been singing along with it, calling yourself female dogs, whores, talking about how you do this to somebody, slob somebody up, swallow a man semen, you singing right along with it. And you don't even want to get me started on Beyonce. I'm going to leave that alone. 
Come on, man. I ain't even finna get started on Beyonce. We'll be here all night. I don't like Beyonce. Never did. He started song saying he want to go to hell. Yeah, he said, oh, no, that was on Suicidal Thoughts. On his first album, he said, I don't want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to heaven with the goody goodies. And he said, I want to wear black hoodies, smoke L's, and wear black hoodies. Plus, the man came back and said it too. Did, don't he, though? Did he, though? I mean, he said, I came back and said it too. Yeah. He got it quick, because when the next time he opened his eyes, that nigga going to lift his eyes up in hell, and guess what? You ain't got no L's in here, though. You the L, nigga. You the L. We going to smoke you. Matter of fact, since we said that Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. That's the we're gonna smoke him. Somebody gonna get high off you, you fat greasy nigga. See if your eye get right there, see if your eye get straight. Some people like, how you gonna talk about Biggie like that? I'm gonna talk about Biggie like that nigga had a clothing line with 666 on it. Some of y'all too young to know about that. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14 and 9. I didn't say this stuff for a reason. Start looking at these people for who they are and stop looking at them for how you used to look at them. Look here, man. I used to listen to Jay-Z all the time. Man, I got out of prison, man, found out that stuff these nasty niggas was doing. I was had just an utter disregard for this nigga music. I just was just disdain. I don't hear nothing you got to say. I was already starting to get peed with him before I got out of prison, just looking at some of the slime ball stuff he was doing. I can't have no three hundred million I can't have no three hundred million dollar company that I started with my homeboy. I'm the godfather of his son. Sells, uh, have him sell a $10 million piece, turn around and tell it to some white folk for 276 million. Just on the simple fact, this my nigga, I gotta let him know. I got these Russians over here, man. They won't rock away for 300 million, my nigga. We're gonna split that down to half. Just because just that's my nigga. Ain't no way in the world I'm gonna buy him off for a little bit and then turn back around and do that. Man, that whole nigga status, man. You ain't no real dude, man. Ain't no real friend gonna do that. We started this together. Mm -hmm. That showed me that that showed me a, 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 a something about your character. Cause this ain't just like oh somebody you met along the way. Y'all built this together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? This man the godfather of your son. Music, see I heard that stuff. School all the music. You know what I'm talking about? Man, that's one thing. That part of your character. That said a lot about you. Then I sit back and look at it. You even said it on one of your own records. Everybody you started out with is gone. Nobody left. Where bleak at? Where he at? They don't see Memphis bleak nowhere. Where he at? These niggas was so slimy. They had these niggas posing and walking with billboards and ads and work paying them. Telling them it's a family thing. Thinking they going to get it down later on the line. Instead of getting models and having to pay him, we get these stupid niggas here to wear it and don't pay these niggas nothing. And we be wanting to be like these dudes, man. That's why I be telling y'all, man, these niggas want to overthrow their government. You ain't going to turn around and do the same thing that they did in 10 times work because you just as wicked as them. Revelation 14 and 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of her wrath and fornicate. I said, I know I said verse 9, but I looked at verse 8 for some reason. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image, and receives mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the Kodesh angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascend up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. So we'll be smoking him. You remember what we read last week about the drinking that cup? Remember he said in Isaiah, the cup done passed from Yahshua. All those who go against you, they gonna drink it. Mm -hmm. Now you know what he said, they drinking that cup of his indignation. And guess what? Now that's talking about a whole other matter. But be around here committing sin. That means Satan your father. We mean you serve him, you worship him. That means you drinking that cup now. So y'all around here playing, trying to intermingle with sinners and worry about these people and think it's all right. Some of y'all scream cold dead, but you ain't like that because you still want to be friends and be cool with a whole bunch of old five silly type niggas. I ain't telling you that you ain't got the, you ain't necessarily you got to cut everybody off because everybody ain't, but you better watch it. Some of y'all fool with people I wouldn't fool with. Some of y'all be trying to link up with people I wouldn't want to be linked up with. Just sit back and look at it. Do they serve the beast? Do they serve Satan? You see what cup they say they going to drink now. You going to drink it too. That's y'all. First Peter chapter 1 now. I'm just letting you know something. Now. I'm trying to tell you something good, man. I'm trying to tell you something to save your soul. Leave these people alone. I'm telling you, man. 
We got back to First Peter. We still holding Jeremiah three and Jeremiah twelve and Matthew thirteen. I'm just trying to tell you something good now. I done told some of y'all this before, and specifically, ain't nothing wrong if you spot somebody and you see they serving God, and that's what they earnestly and they heart, that's what they doing. But man, y'all better watch some of these people out here, man. I seen Chelsea just let him know earlier today. I seen what Chelsea told. Chelsea said, man, if I ain't got direct dealing with you, or you ain't part of the similar first born, she said, I can't have, I can't deal with you, I can't fool with you. And I ain't just sitting back saying you just got to mess with people who part of this congregation, but you better be careful about who you fool with, who you mess with, who you talk to. Everybody not trying to do what you're doing, you're going to get wrapped up, caught up with them, and you're going to get the same reward they get. Everybody's not after salvation. Some of y'all too simple and too dumb to realize that. Too naive. Just too simple. I see through niggas. I see through niggas. I see that stuff coming. I see stuff coming. I sit back and look at, man, that nigga, that ain't right. Well, I'm watching that nigga. I give you the benefit of the doubt. I might know you full of crap, this, that, that, and all. I might voice to somebody else. Man, they might be all right. Back in my mind, I'm like, that nigga full of crap. I hope he proved me wrong. But I don't know. Because sometimes I don't want to voice it out loud and somebody be like this. Sometimes sometime my sister can know if I think somebody full of crap. She can just look at me and tell her I ain't got to say a word. That's because she know me well enough to know. My brother think that nigga dumb. He ain't going to say nothing right now, though. Am I lying, little one? Yeah, they don't too, though. But you know a little better than she do. But you can tell if I think somebody full of crap. No, I mean, the reason why is because I won't look at them and let them know I think you full of crap. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. My face let it know. You know what I'm saying? I'll give, I'll give anybody the benefit of the doubt. But I know after a while, time going to prove out if you full of crap or not. I might think inwardly you full of crap. And might be hoping that you prove me wrong. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm looking at it like this here. Like, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. But I don't know about this one. I'm going to tell you all. If some of y'all, I look at you like this here. I give you the benefit of the doubt. Some of y'all be like this here. I don't know about that nigga right there. Man. I don't know this what he want to do. I don't know if this is what she want to do. But we'll see. The Lord give you space to let you in. I done told some of y'all before he let you in. So you can go to hell and be saved. The choice yours. We're in verse 17. And if you call on the Father who without respect of person judge according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear. Listen to what he tells you. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold from your vain behavior received by tradition from your Father. Ain't that what we read in Jeremiah 3? Hold on, let's read Jeremiah 3 because I've been talking about a lot of different stuff just to refresh your memory. Jeremiah 3 verse 23, 24. This is what he said. Shame devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth. Their flocks and their herds and their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame. Confusion cover our faith. Because we sinned against y'all. We and our fathers from our youth. Even to this day we haven't obeyed. And Peter sitting here telling you. That we weren't redeemed from corruptible things. From the, the, the worthless behavior that we received from our forefathers. That's why we're in the position that we're in right now. Look at Leviticus 26 by verse 42. The vain behavior of our fathers and that shame cover our face. That's why shame covered the Messiah's face because he inherited that vain behavior by dying for our sin. That's why shame covered it. That's why the shame devoured him because of the works of our forefathers. So you didn't even know the Messiah was in that death. That's why shame had to cover him because of the sins of the people. That's why he lied down in shame. Oh man. Did y'all see that? How many of y'all caught that when we read it? Did you catch it? Don't you know reproach means dishonor, sin is a shame. It's a shame to be a sinner. Some of y'all ain't got no shame. That's why you ain't going to be saved. We'll look at Ezekiel 36 to go along with it. I promise to you, we'll get to the speck of burden in a minute. But it's some stuff the Lord want to tell y'all today. Leviticus 26 and 40. Leviticus 26 and 40. It's some stuff the Lord want to tell y'all today. Because some of y'all ain't shame. Some of y'all been around here pump faking and playing, dealing very treacherously by departing from your husband. We'll look at Hebrew chapter 3 to go along with. We're going we, we gonna to go to Hebrew chapter 3 second. And something else I mentioned. It'll come back to my mind in a minute. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, 
with their trespass which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity. So we sit back and look at it. We walk contrary to God. God walked contrary to us. The son ended up having the father walk contrary to him, not because he committed sin, but because of the sins of the people. The father had to walk contrary to him. And he turned around and accept the punishment of the iniquity of our father and see what happened. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with will I remember. And I will remember the land. So because Yahshua walked contrary and took on the shame of the people and lied down in it, he remembered Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hold on. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 67. Let's see if that validates that. Then we might look at Galatians chapter 3. Oh, it's all type of stuff coming to my mind. Who remember what I asked for before that Hebrews chapter 3? Nobody remembers? Because I don't remember either. Huh? Oh, Ezekiel 36. That's what it was. Ezekiel 36. I appreciate it. Let's look at Luke 1 and 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and prophesied, saying, Blessed be Yah, Elohim of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his Kodesh prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Because death is our enemy. Certainly hate hates us because Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He accused them day and night. He had no desire for you to live. But let's look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 26. I thank the Lord. He helped somebody out today. We got to start doing better, my people. Got to start doing better. For ye are all children of God by faith in the Messiah, Yahshua. For as many of you have been baptized in the Messiah, have put on the Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in the Messiah, Yahshua. And if you be the Messiah, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So because he was willing to do, had that faith that Abraham had, and he went and died for the sins of the people, because he confessed the iniquities of the people. Died for the sins of the people. Because he said, take this is my blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. He said, I'll remember the covenant. I remember Abraham. I remember Isaac. I remember Jacob. Don't you think when this man went and died for the sins of the people, he remembered? What did you say? No, no, no. How many of y'all, y'all, do y'all see that? Can y'all put it? Because it said we lie down in our shame. If you're a man of sorrows, you sitting around this man. This man won't sin for the people. I'm going to tie it in a second real fast. Hold on, look at Ezekiel 36. We're going to get to that speck of bird, 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 Lord will, because we have to crash that. So another, so y'all know, if an Israelite come to you talking about, see, my heritage is unto me as a speck of bird. You better get your heritage out of my faith, nigga. They ain't talking about no Latinos, nigga. They ain't talking about no light skin, light skin, dark skin, brown skin, yellow. Ezekiel 36 and 30. Get rid of that. They won't even see, ain't nobody going to be able to sit back and tell you that no more. Make it 31. Ezekiel 36 and 31. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe your sides and loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this say of Yah, be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Do you know when this was actually fulfilled? Who knows when this was actually fulfilled? This specific saying that these people would be confused and ashamed for what they did and that he didn't do it for you. Who knows when this was fulfilled? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 37. We still hold the Hebrew chapter 3. We good in, this, in Le Leviticus 26. Let's look at Acts chapter 2 before we jump over here to Hebrew chapter 3 by verse 11. Acts chapter 2 verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Yahshua whom you have crucified, both Lord and Messiah. 
Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as Yah our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Y'all keep that in mind with them 3,000 souls. So these people were ashamed and confounded because of the works that they did and because they confessed their iniquities and humbled themselves. He remembered the covenant, didn't he? Sitting back showing you, this was about y'all sure. All because the people dealt treacherously with him. They thought they were blessed in the deed that they had done did by killing this man. We sit around thinking we blessed and working ungodly deeds and we don't know every time we commit sin we show that we guilty of killing this man. But now we're going to sit back and look at Hebrew chapter 3 before we look at something in Genesis chapter 4. I'm going to show you something good. Hebrew chapter 3. We've got to get a little understanding. See, I seen a dude posting something talking about uh, the, uh, something about he, uh, the Hebrew elders lying. That he's talking about you're supposed to stick to your first doctrine. Trying to use them stuff, use certain stuff that Paul said and, and, and that the apostle wrote. That we supposed to stick to some one way doctrine. I'm going to tell you this dumbest part. These niggas ever sit back and think that everybody who ever deal with this word. to find out they Israel. That everybody done dealt with 125th Street out of all. Everybody ain't heard that crap. Hebrew 3 and 11. I know some of y'all. Some of y'all might have heard elements and pieces of it. But a lot of y'all ain't never learned and been taught that crap. I know the rip. Little Muffin and Dwight had it. Glove had it. They never heard of it. I know Mouse, she never heard of it. She don't know nothing about it. She don't know nothing about that stuff. I know Lee don't know nothing. I know Lee, but see, the difference is, is, I'm talking about their mentality is that everybody who know they Israel knows this teaching, knows this doctrine. They don't realize everybody who, who found out they Israel don't know about that. I'm sitting here looking in front of three people. My mama ain't never heard it. You know what I'm talking about? My sister and her husband, they never heard it. Glover and his wife, they don't know nothing about any of that stuff. They never heard of a 12 tribe talk. They ain't never seen it. Hebrews 3 and 11. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed. Brother, let there be an any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. See, some of y'all hearts been hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. That's why you sit back and keep doing the stuff you be doing. Come on around here to Genesis chapter 4. That's why you do the stuff you be doing. Your heart been made hard. What you think happened with Pharaoh, the deceitfulness of sin, that's why his heart got hardened. We'll see if that happened here in Genesis 4 with, with old Cain. See if his heart got a little hard. Look at Genesis chapter 4. What happened with Cain, right? We know Cain and Abel is the story of Yahshua, right? When he killed, when Cain killed Abel, that was showing how the, Gen, uh, uh, the Pharisees killed, killed Yahshua, right? But how many of y'all would think the story of Cain would buy him too, though? Let's look at about verse, verse 9. Let's start at verse 9. He said, y'all said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? He said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? You know, everybody like to say that term, but y'all know he was being sarcastic here, right? You know, a lot of people love to say, I'm my brother's keeper. They don't realize, you probably not. Because when Cain said that, he was like, nigga, I look like I keep up with that nigga to you. That's what he was saying right on. He said, well, he said, you, where's your brother? Am I that nigga keeper? I don't know where that nigga at. They just said that, they look. That's it, that's a look at it. You know, people say stuff when you look at the context of what he was saying that he was being sarcastic. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. He said, Oh now, he said, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which from have which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond. Shalt thou be in the earth? 
And Cain said unto y'all, My punishment is greater than I can bear. He said, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that find me shall slay me. And Yah said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And Yah set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So what you think this means when he say vengeance will be laid on him sevenfold if they touch him? What y'all think that talking about? What? What that sevenfold is referring to? Mm -hmm. Falling down seven times. Falling down seven times. And what we were in the law say, whosoever sheds man blood, by man his blood must be shed, because the image of God made he him, right? So this man just say you could that's why he down right now. He said you'll be cursed in a vagabond and a fugitive. That means you go from place to place, right? Let's look at what it is. Is that Luke chapter nine? Is that Luke chapter nine? I won't let's see if y'all sure was a vagabond. Y'all know what a vagabond that's somebody just travel around, go from play to play, ain't got nowhere to go. The word temptations, a rolling stone. <laughs> he a rolling stone, that was it. You say, not Yahshua was a rolling stone, but he laid his hat, that wasn't home. And where did he start? Luke chapter 9, verse 57. <laughs> and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee with seven thou go. Yahshua said unto him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. That sounds like he a vagabond in the future. You know what a fugitive is? That's a criminal, right? That's somebody who they want to take and kill. I'm a fugitive. People want to do stuff to me. How many times do we read about these people didn't take him because they wanted the hour or whoever? He got a mark on him. You can't get it. But when the mark came off and they could kill him, but they didn't realize the mark was still on him, you still going to be cursed. You know what he said, right? Your brother's blood called unto me from the ground, right? Matthew 26, what did they say? Let his blood be on our children, children. So when that man's blood hit the ground, what are they crying out? Revelation 1 and 7. Y'all didn't realize that. If we flip back and look at the curse, it's still the Lord. It's still him. He said, thou art cursed. He say the shame cover us. We lie down in our shame. I lie down in reproach. I lie down in sin. Oh man. How many times we read about this man bearing our sins? He bore, he came in. Come on now. Know your God. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing what we're doing. We ain't doing it just to hear me talk. Behold. Behold, he come with clouds. And every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, even all the kindreds of the earth shall wear because of him, even so. Amen. Because remember, he said he heard a voice of yelling in the city right on the high hills. So it's only right when he returned, y'all turned back to yell, because he cried out when he gave up the ghost, right? Made a loud sound. Let me look at that Jeremiah 3 again now. Let's see if that would say now. Let's see if that would say. Let's just make sure I see that would say. I don't want to make y'all think I'm making this up. It said right there in verse 21, a, verse, a voice was heard upon the high places with weeping and supplication. Did this man cry out with a loud voice? Matthew 27. Let's just see if he cried out with a loud voice. This man is in the volume of every word. Check that just turned me the other day. And, and, and you know, I knew the nigga was crazy. And I remember when Mouse said when she heard the girl on here, she was like, that nigga crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Come back to tell Chelsea. I know the whole book about the Lord, but everything ain't about him. What does in the volume of the book mean? The whole book, you stupid, dumb nigga. Matthew 27, 46. And about the ninth hour, y'all, she would cry with a loud voice. I heard a loud voice in the high places. Saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbat, now that is to say, my God, my God, why have they forsaken me? Because what they did, they lifted the Son of Man up, which would mean he would be on a high place. You would have to look up to him, because the book said, you'll look upon me whom you have pierced. I mean, you got to look up, be pretty high, ain't it? 
Then you have weeping and supplication. You don't think the people are crying and weeping and mourning? So you weep for me as you weep for your only son, right? That's what Jeremiah told you. That was Zechariah told you. Come on now. Work with me. Come on back over here and look at Genesis chapter 4. Y'all work with me now. This man in the volume of every word. Ain't nobody would have thought to look for Cain, look for the Yahshua and Cain. This man say he cursed from the earth. Ain't this man cursed from the earth? What verse are we looking at? He cursed from the earth, which I opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. He said, My punishment is greater than I can bear. What was Yahshua sitting back saying to the Father when he was praying in Matthew 26? If it's possible. Can you let this cup pass from me? Because it's greater than I can bear right now. But nevertheless, thy will be done, not my will. Ain't that what he said? If you're praying for the cup to pass, ain't you saying this punishment is more than I can take? First, First Corinthians chapter 2. Y'all see that? Does that make sense for y'all? If you sitting back praying for this cup to pass, are you not saying this punishment is more than I can take? Ain't that something? Ain't the Lord good? Thank the Lord for understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. After that, Hebrew chapter 12. We still hold in Matthew 13, Jeremiah 12. I promise to you, we'll get to the speck of birth. I had the word Cain in, though. Matter of fact, then we'll look at then we'll look at Joshua chapter eight because I got something in there too. I got some stuff in Samuel. I might save it for tomorrow. He said there have no temptation. Matter of fact, look at twelve. Hold on, my man dropped off. Let me see if we get him by. Hold on, let me see if I get him by. But I got him on here for a reason. Hold on, let me see if I get him by. Oops. But this book is beautiful, man. This book is beautiful. Okay, his phone died. He'll be back. He'll be back in a second. First Corinthians ten and twelve. Wherefore let him that think he stand take heed lest he fall. Therefore have no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So even in Yahshua's temptation, because he said you are those that were with me in my temptations. He said, therefore I appoint to you a kingdom. He made a way for him to escape. It was called the resurrection of the dead. Huh? Because Cain said, this temptation more, he said, this more than I can bear. I can't take this. He made a way for him to escape. He said, anybody that touch you, I'll hit him sevenfold. And I'll slam. We just were in Revelation 1 and 7. He'll come back to all those that pierce in their well because of. We know what Revelation 14 can't come back and say, to us they're not sickle. We know this man garment covered in blood. Because whoever touch you, I'm a slam. These people put their hands on this man. I'm a slam. Did you know why they don't get you know why they don't get slayed? Because we just read how you say you treacherously depart from your husband, right? The law said you should commit adultery, right? Didn't the did the writer of Hebrew tell you adulterers are adulterers are whoremongers you will judge? Didn't he tell you in Revelation 21, adultery is going in the lake? Depart from your sure you're an adulterer and you're going to hell. Why he said, Don't depart from the living God with an evil heart of unbelief. That's what they had. That's what Cain had. An evil heart of unbelief. He departed. So, because he had an evil heart of unbelief and departed, he got cursed. And because we had that same heart, we sit back and look at it. We got cursed. Yahshua came to bear that curse. Galatians told you that. The Messiah redeemed it from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. And this bright mention and golden mention, he said, You touch it. I'm going to hit you sevenfold. We know that's them seven afflictions. I'm going to hit you with them. I'm going to shed your blood. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm not going to bear false witness on you. I'm going to tell the truth. Because when you judge, what did the Messiah say? John chapter 8. Let's just see what it say. John chapter 8. Let's just see what it say. John 8 and, and about 14. 
Guess what? He said your feet swift to run and to eat to mischief, and you got evil intentions in your heart. But he gonna have because he said he in, in righteousness. He gonna judge and make war. So guess what? My intentions gonna be righteous, and I'm gonna be swift to, re to render recompense upside your head. Matter of fact, we can look at Joel chapter three and tie that into. I'm telling you, man. John chapter 8 and verse 15. Let's see what the Lord will say. I really love this word, man. I love this thing. It's the greatest thing ever do. Best job I ever had. Huh? Huh? What you say? No. No, you said something? Shoot, you probably would think, said what I said in my own head. I ain't had that many. <laughs> <laughs> and the ones I had sucked anyway. <laughs> yeah, I ain't tell you, man. Man, look at No, yeah. Now they don't pay like this one. Definitely the Lord do pay better. You know what I'm saying? But I had meaningful jobs. I ain't had no career. I had jobs. Y'all do know there's a difference between a career and a job. See this right here? Whether it's a career or a job, this job here, this career here, it pay better. But it's the best job I ever had. John, John 8 and 15. That's the best job I had. I ain't had that many. And I said the ones I had, they suck now. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing to be boasting and bragging about. Yeah, I used to work here. You'd be like, and nigga, you get that job straight out of high. You get that job straight out of high school. He said, "You judge after the flesh. I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I'm not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. So get what." He ain't gonna bear no false witness on you. When he come through the king, his judgment gonna be true. So don't sit back and talk about he talking about so discord among brethren. He ain't saw no discord. He coming to execute. All that stuff you did to him, he gonna come and do to you. Cause he said if you touch it, sevenfold. So y'all supposed to call back because we've been dealing with that. Y'all don't even think that was another way to tie in that sevenfold. Cause Lord will, the brother Sal gonna have us on his show to deal deal with that sometime next month with the just man falling seven times. We're gonna shock the nation. Joshua chapter 8. Ain't nobody going to be ready for this here. Not tying Cain in with it too. Cain too? You see, no way Cain talking about the Messiah. We're going to make it plain for him to see. That's why when we were telling them about it last night, we said on Wednesday night, that's why we told them. See, y'all know this stuff. Y'all understand how blessed we are. We, who are we that God will see fit to visit us with a word? For some of y'all that he done saw fit to draw, to draw to this, and y'all went out here playing and pump faking. Y'all don't realize what the man done drove you to to allow you to hear. It's people that don't know this. If people sit back and look at, sit back and look at this man talking about, uh, mm -hmm. he a vagabond in the earth or whoever taking vengeance gonna take on him sevenfold. Hold on, let go, my man, right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? You gotta sit back and look at it. It's people who don't know this, who dying to know it. Hold on, y'all. Still went the voice, man. Mm -hmm. I'm just sit back looking at it. So we look at Joshua chapter 8 now. And tie one more thing in. Let's look at about verse 21. Mm -hmm. It tie right back in what we just read in Revelation 21, 14 too. Joshua chapter 8, verse 21. Now what I tell you, and, and the thing is, y'all see, that y'all some of y'all see, y'all don't even see me be going back and forth with none of these dudes like that. You see that? I just tell him to call my phone. Nigga called my phone the other day. I'm talking to one man. He in the background trying to get at me. Talking about saying this, that, and that. I'm talking to nigga. I ain't even talking to you. But every time I had something to say to him, I let him know. Nigga, I'm talking to you now. Nicole tells she's sitting right there. I let him know I'm talking to you now, nigga. And the reason why that, that went down, because the man who had the man call me, he sitting, he sitting back, he sitting back looking at you always talking about this dude who got the word, this, that, there, and the other. Why you still sinning? And this is something I'm telling y'all. Y'all be running want to tell people you can live without sin, and you want to tell them, oh, man, we learning this from this dude, and we learning that. But they looking at what you doing. And when they see what you doing, they not hearing none of the stuff you saying, which don't really want to make them come here. That's I'm saying. Because they looking at, well, if it's possible to be that way, and he's saying that he that way, why you ain't? Y'all don't look at it that way. Joshua 8 and 21. Joshua 8 and 21. 
Matter of fact, make it 20. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven. Didn't that say that same thing about Babylon? Smoke ascended up to heaven. And they had no power to flee this way or that way, and the people that fled to the wilderness turned back upon the pursuers. And Joshua and Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended. Then they turned again and slew the man of Ai. And the other issued out of the city against them. So they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side, some on that side, and they smoked them, so that they let none of them escape. Did you see how so some of them were in the midst of Israel, some on the left, and some on the right? When was somebody on the left and right of in the midst of Israel? Them two, them two things. And the king of Ai, they took alive and brought him to Joshua. They took Yahshua alive, brought him to the ruler, brought him to Pilate. And it came to pass when Israel made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field in the wilderness wherein they chased them. And when they were fallen on the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned unto Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. And so it was that all that fell that day, both of the men and women, were twelve thousand, even all the men of Ai. For Joshua drew not his hand back, where if he stretched out the spear, until he utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for a prey unto themselves according to the word which Yah commanded Joshua. And Joshua burnt Ai and made a heap over, he made it a heap forever, even a desolation unto this day. And listen what he say. And the king of Ai he hanged on a tree until evening tide. And as soon as listen what else he say, and as soon as the sun was down. Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it into the entering of the gate of the city and raise thereon a great heap of stones that remain unto this day. John chapter 19, verse 30. Took this man, hanged him on a tree till evening time, then took him down, threw him in some stones. Even the king of Ai said, how do you niggas sit back and read a story about a man getting hung on a tree and get take off the tree and don't see the Lord in it? Oh, that's about King Ai. Yep, yeah, if you stupid. Mm-hmm. It's not given unto the natural man to understand the things of us. It's, it's, they can't perceive it. That's why we take spiritual things comparing with spiritual. That's why Paul said that. We'll look at that though too. When Yahshua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And the Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath was a high day, the salt pilot that the legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and the others which were crucified with him. But when they came to Yahshua and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs, drop down to 38. And after this, Joseph of Arrhythmia, being a disciple of Yahshua, but secretly for the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that they might take away the body of Yahshua. And Pilate gave him leave, and he came therefore, and took the body of Yahshua. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came by, to Yahshua by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. And they took the body of Yahshua and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bear it. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and a garden, a new sepulchre, where never was man yet laid. And they said he put a heap of stones on him, another testimony of them putting a stone on that grave. For lo, I come in the volume of the book, it written to me. That made that statement of that nigga talking about search the scriptures going against Paul make him seem even more dumb than what he is now. What you say, Pell? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. That really made that nigga look stupid. We still ain't dug off in Jeremiah 12 like I want to. But we got time. Matter of fact, I want you to look by verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. That's why we take the time. We can line the stuff up. See if it makes sense. Did that stuff with Cain make sense for all y'all? Did that make perfect sense as a testimony of the Lord? I'm, talk I'm talking to everybody. Everybody seen that? I want to make sure everybody seen that. 
I know that there, I know that there in Johnson were we crystal clear. Ain't even no dispute no argument about that. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. That was, that was I sit back and tell you, man, hey man, if they preaching the word, man, and you hear the voice of Judah when they preach it, by all means, hearken to what they talking about. But if you know the nigga stupid and you still entertaining the stuff they talking about, you need to take your good hand, turn it backwards, and slap yourself. Ain't none of y'all gonna go to McDonald's after you done sat down and had a porterhouse steak. What type what type of stuff that ain't gonna eat some bad food? And you're getting good food. That's dumb. That's dumb. At least if you're going to go hear the word, somebody has found on the word, at least it got to be as good or better than what you're getting. How are you going to downgrade? That's like, having a, that's like having a beautiful woman to go marry in a mud dog. You're going to cast away a dime for a mud dog. I'm talking about... Come on, man. Some of y'all know some of these dudes out here that have some old beautiful women. They go get a old note, this old, and a ratchet foot drag at that, and she ugly and vampire. Some of y'all women know y'all have some good men and go sleep with old no good nothing nothing nigga. Nigga just ain't about nothing. He said, "Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God." That's why he said, "All those who know the Father, come unto me, because they all be taught of God." The people not coming to the Son, because they ain't been taught of God. The man told you I used the similitudes in the ministry of the prophets. They gonna sit back and say, "I ain't talking about okay. That's a similitude, dumb nigga. That's a similitude." If you don't see how Yahshua was a fugitive in a vagabond, then he tell the people of other places I must preach, I gotta go from here to here. That's what vagabonds do, they go from place to place. They ain't just by big Yeah. They go from place to place. They go from place to place. That's basically a nomad. And guess who else was a nomad? Abraham. Isaac, Jacob went from place to place. Huh? Jacob, Jacob was a fugitive. Esau was trying to kill him. From his own brother. These niggas ought to be slapped for just do. Nigga, that's what I said. Nigga ought to slap the nigga for general principle. He said, which also, which things also we speak. Listen, not in the words which man wisdom teach, but which the rule our car code teach, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. See, niggas be talking about, see, a man wrote the Bible. I seen a nigga say we done made the Bible an idol. Nigga ought to punch you in your mouth for being a nigga. Nigga say we have made the Bible an idol. Nigga, we don't worship the book. We we sweep follow the words in the book. These niggas talking about you can teach people of the Lord without the book, but the man say you got to be taught of God. How to teach you a God without His Word? That's that's talking about teaching a man how to fix transmissions without the instruction manual. We just go here with. We just figured out, because I just sat back and followed the example of what he did. I really have no no idea how to fix this machine, but we don't really need this book to do it. Because a man wrote it, and we don't want to worship the book. Nigga ought to be, nigga ought to be punched in their throat for living. Second Peter 1 and 19. We all have also a more sure word of prophecy. Know where unto you do well that ye take heed. As a light that shines into a dark in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, and a man willed it. But by, but Kodesh men of God spake as they were moved by the Ruach of Kodesh. Psalm sixty eight and four. He said, man, Psalm 68 and 4. He said, these men were moved by the Spirit of God. God gave them the word. Let me make sure that's the verse I want. 
Niggas ought to be. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to work with son. I'm going to show you son now. now. Thank the Lord. I got something else I want. Sing unto God and sing praises to his name. Extol him that ride upon the heavens by his name. Yah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his Kodesh habitation. Guess what? We ain't had no father. We were bastards out here until Yahshua came to be our father. We were bastards out here. God said in solitary, set the solitary in families, he bring out those which were bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Get what? Yahshua came up out of the grave because it wasn't possible that death should hold him. Broke the chains of death. Said the man was cursed, he became a curse and lied down in his shame because he sinned against God, but yet we got the victory through the man. Now how are we going to sit back knowing this man that attained the victory and overcome the world and we're going to sit around here pump faking and playing? You better start laying this word up in your heart and following it and believing it and obeying it. Oh God, that when thou went forth before thy people, when thou did march through the wilderness, say Lord, the earth shook just like it did when the Lord died. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. The heavens dropped because the sun didn't give his light. Neither did the star and the moon cover. Thou, O God, didst send plentiful rain, whereby thou did confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. So when did he give plentiful rain to, uh, rain to confirm his uh, inheritance with his people when they were a little tired? When did that happen? When did he confirm it? He said he would confirm his covenant with men for a week. It would completely confirm when he sought down the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, brother, thy congregation have dwelt therein, thou, O God, thou have prepared of thy goodness for the poor. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall have the kingdom of God. Humble. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he shall exalt you in due time. This is what this man death was showing you. This is what we were looking at in Leviticus 26. He took on the sins of the people, acknowledged the iniquity of the people, took the punishment of the people. He looked at it, he remembered the covenant, he rose from the dead. How are we going to be rolled from the dead if we can't accept the punishment of our iniquity and humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God? That's what Yahshua did. He exalted them by giving them a name greater than all names. Look what he said in verse 11. Though, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. That line up with what Peter told you. Y'all gave the word. Ain't no man come up with this. You think Moses sit back and be able to tell you when y'all were telling him this? That this was a testimony of him with the cup? No one knew this. Where we was at before this uh, 2 Peter 1? Escape my mind. And nevertheless, let's go back over here to Matthew 13 and finish it up. Mm. We wasn't holding nothing mm. else. I think we finished Genesis 4. I think we finished everything we needed. Man, hallelujah for Yahshua. Thank the Lord for the word. Again, my man, my man, quad phone messing up, but. We do appreciate uh, Pell and Kip. When we was able to fit fit a lot more information with three of y'all in there, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you text me. I did. Let me finish. Let me finish, all right? All right. I mean, you text me earlier okay. than that so I could go to sleep uh, as soon as I get home. Okay, I got and you. And then wake up and go to that. Yeah, yeah, I and got you. text me about 6 o'clock. I was good in my night. Indeed, indeed. I concur. I'll let you know, Lord, well, I already got the sign. He's going to have me come back January to deal with it. I told him, I said, we got to deal with the Proverbs 24 and 16. We're actually going to, I mean, it'll be a good for rehashing with y'all. We might throw some new things in here and there, here and there but we're going to go out in front of these people or we're going to let them know that they will no longer use Ecclesiastes 7 and 20 for their justification for committing their sins. We're going to show them what they're probably... We're going to sit back and look at them and we're going to let the Lord, let these people know that the Lord is with us. Like when we sat there and I referenced it and dropped that on them, I said, we know what it means. 
Y'all got to sit back and look at that. Of all the people in the earth, it ain't that many people walking this earth know what that means. And God saw fit to bless us to let us know what that means. Exactly. Just like the word say in Zephaniah 3. Just like Paul told you in Romans 11. You know what I'm talking about? A residue. A residue. You got to sit back and look at it, man. What is so special about us? Did man see fit to visit us with that? How are we able to, how are we able to, how, what, what's so special about us? He let us know what this means. That means God love us and wanted to be saved and niggas around here playing. You still around here trying to fool with sinners. Still trying to around here fool with people who utterly retarded. Still caught up with the stuff going on in the world and what world are people doing. That man told me, Luke chapter 9 one more time before I read this Matthew 13. I don't know what's wrong with some of y'all. Luke chapter 9, about verse 61. 59, matter of fact. Sit back and look at it, man. Look, we're going to sit back this man allow us to see him in Cain. In Cain. And he said unto another, follow me, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Yahshua said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my at, at home in my house. Yahshua said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Some of y'all ain't fit for God's kingdom, because you steady looking back. He told you, remember Lot's wife, you're going to hell. Because you steady looking back. Steady looking back. Steady want to hang on to this person, hold on to this person. Hold on to that, hold on to that, hold on to that, hold on to that. And you know, uh, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 1, and you know you're going to hell. Why would you pick up this book to play? Stop worrying about how you appear to others and be worried about how you appear to God. Where is your fear for this man? Where is your love for this man? Man, this thing bigger than making a Facebook post or walking around talking about this stuff, man. It's bigger than that. My whole objective every week is to be locked in and focused to make sure that we can get here so y'all can hear the word, so you can hear what this man wants you to know. And some of y'all throughout the week be focused on any and everything other than doing what you ought to do. I know sometimes, man, I know sometimes some of y'all probably want to be able to watch a video or, or study something like you want to, but you got a lot of stuff going on in your life and you can't get it done like you would like. But that ain't no excuse for not adhering to what you already been, have already been taught and what you already learned. Some of y'all still try to fit in your own junk. And I'm going to be honest with you. Some of y'all do stuff because you know we all ain't here in this city. Can't nobody see you and hold you accountable. But you think, that, you think oh, that nigga can't see me. He don't know. But the Lord know. And he going to make sure that he figure out a way to get me a word to let me know. To get me something to let you know that he know. Because I know some of y'all think I'm stupid. You know what I'm talking about? I think you forgot who I work for. I ain't got to see you. He see you. But y'all don't think about that, do you? Y'all be like, shoot, I ain't in Jacksonville. He can't see what I'm doing. You worry about me seeing what you're doing. The Lord sitting there watching you, you dummy. He ruled 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also accomplished about with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the same which thou easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and it sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, a lot of y'all, y'all ain't laid aside the weight and the sin that easily holds you back. And that's why you can't run the race, because you got, you, got, you got lead weights in your pocket. Ain't none of y'all thought about that, did you still got a lot of weights in your heart. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all be so want to be accepted and be part of the crowd so bad. One thing about me, ever since I was a jitterbug, I ain't never cared about being part of the crowd. I didn't care if I was accepted or not. 
I didn't need validation from people. I didn't need no woman, no man to validate my self-esteem or worth or what I thought about myself. Didn't need it. Some of y'all still caught up in that. And when you need validation or, or, or compliments or for people to validate your self-worth or your self-esteem, for you to feel good about yourself. When you ought to feel good about yourself that God saw fit to allow you to see his word. That he would manifest and reveal himself to you. That the arm of y'all would be revealed to you that you might believe his report. But that ain't sufficient for some of y'all. Some of y'all, that's why he said, how can you believe that seek honor one from another, not the honor that come from God only? So you still want honor from men. And you're going to go to hell with it. He said, if you get glory from men, you already got your reward. You want to be seen. I ain't never been a dude that had to be seen. I can always find, it better be in the background. You can get more work done in the cut than you can in the front. With, it, with everybody, you know what I'm talking about? When you want everybody to see I'm telling you now, that, that's a strong sign of low self-esteem, a lack of self-worth when you want everybody to see you. That means you're really not confident in yourself. And when you find yourself like that, it's time to fall back. Start reassessing yourself. See why you don't love yourself like you're supposed to. See why you don't value yourself like you're supposed to. That's something lacking, lacking inwardly. I had a brother talking to me the other day about how he always felt the need to have to be with somebody because he didn't know how to be by himself because he didn't love himself the way he did. He needed validation from somebody else. That's things that's going inwardly. Some of y'all have to sit back and realize what it means to be by yourself so you can love yourself. I promise you can't love nobody else you don't love yourself. It's going to be impossible. And you truly can't love nobody if you don't love God. I'm going to tell y'all now, a lot of y'all don't love yourself. You don't value yourself. You don't respect yourself. Your self-esteem is low. Your self-respect is low. Your self-confidence is low. Your self-worth is low. And you're not going to get that from compliments from people or validation from people. Whether it be at school, on your job, dealing with the word, on social networks. I wouldn't care where you got it from. I'm talking to everybody, men and women. Everybody. You got to learn to love and respect and value yourself. Then, then to sit back and you will get that when you begin to see who God is and the mercy and love that he showed to you. That you will sit back and see that you were worthy of salvation because this man came and laid his life down for you. And all you got to do is lay your life down for him. And when you begin to learn and love and fear God, then you can begin to learn who you really are. As a man and as a woman. Begin to see your frailties and infirmities and weaknesses and begin to turn them into weakness, I mean, into strengths. You know what I'm talking about? You begin to see who you are so you can get to where you need to be. But a lot of y'all don't want to do that. That's probably the most difficult thing for anybody to do is turn around and look themselves in the face and see themselves for who they really are. I have told y'all this before, I'm going to tell you again. The worst thing a person can ever do is think that they are a particular place and they know that they're not sitting there lying to yourself. Ain't nothing worse than a grown person that lie to themselves. Trying to convince yourself that you've reached a certain area. That's why I was tripping on what that sister said put up there when she heard her preaching Wednesday. She said at that time when you think you got something down packed, then you get slapped with reality. You ain't nowhere where you thought you were. Some of y'all think you had a position, a particular place. You not there. And the Lord can slap you upside your head letting you know you're not there. You still won't accept it. Because you're just going to convince yourself that you had a particular place. And I have told some of y'all this before. And I'm going to tell you again, that's real dangerous because the Lord has been done let you keep that type of mind. He let you go to hell with that mind. It's just something to think about. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 12. It's just something to think about. Something to weigh in your heart. Something to weigh in your mind. whole time I started dealing with this word, I never thought I had got to a point where I was straight. But I'm this here. I know I could, if I reach this far, I can go first. I ain't going to feel like it's a wrap and it's done and it's over with till I'm out of here. You know what I'm talking about? To that point, we can still do more. I never be content. I never rest on my laurels. Some of y'all get to a certain point, you rest on it. You think I'm good, shit. Shit, nigga, I ain't cussed in three weeks. Nigga say, I ain't told a lie in three months. Shoot, I'm straight. Word part is, some of you be like, you ain't told a lie, you living a lie. Matter of fact, James chapter 1, verse 21. Make it 25. Some of y'all living a lie. Ain't nothing worse than living a lie. James chapter 1, verse 21. 
Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he behold himself and go his way and straightway forget what manner of man he was. But whoso look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Who come to mind somebody who heard the word but didn't do it, but thought he was blessed doing what he was doing? Who come to mind for y'all? I got somebody in mind. I'm going to see if anybody got in mind who I got in mind. He said, don't be a, be a hearer of the word. Not a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Who was told to do something but didn't do it, but thought he was doing what was right? Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 15. What'd you say, Pip? King Saul. 1 Samuel 15. Verse 1. See, that's what some of y'all do. You hear the word, but then you go do what you want to do opposite of what you were told to do. That's what some of y'all do. Y'all see here every week, you hear the word and go do directly the opposite of what you heard. Mm -hmm. You know you got to be a retarded nigga. What? Samuel also said unto Saul, Y'all sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of Yah, be a doer of the word, not a hearer. Thus saith Yah of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that he have and spare them not, both, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telehem, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go depart, get ye down from the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. See, they go back to the story in, in Exodus. When we were coming up out of Egypt, the Amalekites laid up in the cut, tried to kill the women and children, came up behind in the hinder parts. Yup. You know what I'm saying? That's where you put the women and the kids at in the weaker men. Straight coward. And they say, I don't go up against the killers. I'm going to go up somebody against I can whoop. You know what I'm talking about? So y'all seen that there. And he say his anger kindled forever that he would block the name of Amalek from under heaven and that he would never forget what they did. See, one thing what y'all do is he don't forget what you do. And he going to come back and see you when he ready to come back and see you. See, a lot of y'all be pulling junk and you think you done got away with it and y'all sitting back looking at you. I ain't, that's the law, ain't it? He said, I ain't gonna never forget what they did. So that means when you do something, he ain't forgot what you did. I'm gonna come see you. I'm gonna come see you. And when I come see you, you gonna feel it. A lot of y'all, the Lord be punching y'all in your face. You still ain't realize that, that that's for your disobedience. You that could you think I ain't did nothing recently, nigga. That was for them sins maybe from six, seven months ago. A year ago, two years ago. Could be you in a continual state of sin. You didn't sit back and realize I'm coming back to see you. That man say he know by no means clears the guilty. He say he forgives sin and transgression. I don't clear the guilty though. That you might know not to sin, because you know there'll be consequences and repercussions for your actions. Let's see here, man. Let's sit back and read where we at. Verse 7. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havidia unto thou come to sure that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the ox and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, that, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of Yah unto Samuel, It repent me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto Yah all night.
Can't do no good. You see what he said? He was a he was a he wasn't a he wasn't a doer of the word. Romans two and thirteen. He was a hearer of the word, but he wasn't a doer. So you know what happened? We're coming back to First Samuel fifteen. Make it nine. Make it matter of fact. Make it verse six. Romans two and six. I thank the Lord. Everybody all right? We just roll. We just trying to do a little, just do a little business. That's all we're trying to do. Just do a little business. Hold on, y'all. I see that brother Randall. He on the uh, screen. Just hit my mind to look at the uh, the chat. I don't ever really look at it too often. But we appreciate you, that brother Randall. At Romans two and six. He said, who will render to every man according to his deeds. The key is in Michael. We're going to come back and look at Saul there. Lord, we're we going to get to the speckled bird. But you see, he just got us looking at all types of stuff. This evening. Uh, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, which means they go against what God said. They like to fight the word, like do what they want to do. And do not obey the truth, like Saul didn't obey. But obey and rightly, you want to do what you want. Indignation and wrath, you going to hell. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul, of every soul of man that do evil, of the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that work good to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. See, a lot of y'all don't look at that. You want to do what you want to do, and you expect to get peace and tranquility. When you're going to get indignation and wrath. When you could just do good and get the peace and tranquility that you say that you want. For there is no respect in person with God. Saul was king. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Just like Saul. He was in the law. He judged by it. He died. We'll see why. For as many as have sinned without the law. Hold on. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. But the doers of the law shall be justified. Now let's sit back and look at it now. When God tell you to do something that law. I told you to go kill these people hearken unto my voice. He didn't do it. He forgot what manner of man he was. Let's see what happened back in 1 Samuel 15. He sat back and looked at it. It repented me. I made this man king. Don't make this man be saying he repented you to let you hear his word. He cut you off. Drop me down about verse 18. And y'all sent thee on a journey and said, Go utterly destroy the sinners, the Amicalites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore did thou not obey the voice of Yah, but did fly upon the spoil, and did evil in the sight of Yah? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I obeyed the voice of Yah, and have gone the way which Yah sent me. And I brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekite. That's just how some of you niggas be. Somebody be like, man, why you went and did that? What you mean? I've been on the end. I did just, I went just the way he told me to go. See, I got the king and all that stuff. Nigga, I didn't tell you to do that. That's just what some of y'all do. You know what the man told you to do. You go do what you want and still try to make your junk be God's way. Story of Saul, something to consider. It's the doers of the word that will be justified. Be ye doers of the word, not a hearer. I know that's what some of y'all do. I know it. I ain't got to be in the city sitting next to you see you every day. I know that's what some of y'all do. You know you've been instructed, you've been shown what to do, you go do your own junk, your own crap, and then try to say y'all told you to do that. I have been doing what I've been told. I have been. Nigga, sit your hypocrite butt down, stop lying. He said, but the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto y'all thy God and Gilgal. And Samuel said, have, have y'all as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of y'all? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken the fat of ram. That's why you need to be a doer of the word and not a hearer. He got great delight in your hearing and obedience to his word. That's what he going to delight in. As a father delighted in his own son who served him. Why do you think he delighted in Yahshua? He served him. 
How else is he going to delight in you unless you serve him? But y'all keep on doing what you want. Second Samuel chapter 1. You keep on doing what you want. Lord trying to get some of y'all. He got it. Man says, as many as he loves, he chastens and rebuke. He got to do it. He got to do it. He got to do it. If he don't do it, you ain't going to stop doing what you're doing. You're going to keep on thinking you're doing right, thinking, you, thinking you're straight, and you're going to hell. We're trying to stop you from going to hell. We'll look at Hebrew chapter 5. Matter of fact, before we look at 2 Samuel chapter 1, Hebrew 5. Hebrew 5. Or Hebrew 6. I wonder why I be going so hard on y'all from time to time, man. Then why? Hebrew 6 and 6. Make it sell. For the earth was drinking the rain that come off upon it, bring forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, to receive blessing from God. But that which bear thorn, thorns and briars is rejected, and is not the cursing who end is to be burned. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you in the things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. But God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you show towards his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. We just said something to y'all not too long ago about being slothful. See, a lot of y'all slothful in your servitude toward God. You slothful. Y'all know every day the conference, the, the call and the stream come on at 8 o'clock. We have to tell you. Some of y'all be slothful and just in all manner of stuff. Some of y'all slothful in natural stuff. So we know you're going to be slothful in spiritual stuff. That's going to go hand to hand. I want to know. Some of y'all got the mind of, I'm going to be more diligent in spiritual things, but slothful in natural things. So I know you're slothful in spiritual things. Ain't no way in the world you're going to be more diligent in spiritual things than you are in natural things. That makes no sense. Come on now. But see, we're trying to save your soul. We told them people that win tonight. A lot of people be like, man, you always telling me I'm going to hell. That's the only part you hear. Man told you in the law, we put before you life and death, blessing and curses. Therefore, choose life that thou and, my, thou and thy seed might dwell in the land where he gave to your fathers forever. You got to put both of them in front of you so you can make a choice. So you can weigh it out. Second Samuel chapter 1. Matter of fact, second chapter chapter one. I'll deal with that another day. We got to get to the Judges chapter twelve, Jeremiah chapter twelve. And the word part is what I'm gonna name the video is in my mind. The part they gonna want to see gonna be all the way at the end. Second Samuel chapter one and one. What they gonna be looking for about the speckled bird? Uh, bird goes gonna be all the way at the end. That means they're going to have to come all the way back to the end to get what they want to hear. They're going to the, they gonna have to listen to the whole thing to get what they want to hear. You see how the Lord do? The problem is turning off before that. Huh? I might turn it off before that. This man ain't talking about no stuff of food. Now, it came to pass after the death of Saul. Well, let's look at 1 Samuel 31. That's above it first. Look at 1 Samuel 31. Let's look at about verse 1 first. We'll get to 2 Samuel. I might get to 2 Samuel 1. I might not. I might just say that. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. Now we know the disciples didn't fall down slain, but they certainly came against them, and they certainly fled from before. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan at Abinadab and Mount Shashua, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul. And the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded on the archers. Where did the archers hit the Lord at, Dwight? In his side. In, in his side. And guess what? He was wounded on the archers because by his stripes we are healed. And he was wounded for our transgressions. Remember Saul, King of Israel, ain't 
Then said Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was so afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. That man said, Please go ahead and kill me for these Gentiles do it. And guess what happened? Gentiles surely abused Yahshua and thrust him through with a side and his side with a sword, didn't he? Let's see if some Gentiles abused him. Matthew chapter 27. Let's just see if some. I don't want nobody to say he added to the word. Let's see if some Gentiles abused him. Matthew 27 and 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Yahshua into the common hall and gathered him into the whole band of soldiers and they stripped him. Put on a scarlet robe. Keep that in mind about the scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail the king of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. So it looks like them uncircumcised abused him. First Samuel 31. Verse 5. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. And the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley, they that were on the other side, Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled and that Saul and his sons were dead. They forsook the cities and fled and the Philistines came and dwelt within them. Look at John chapter 20. He said when they seen he was overcome, they went and hid. John chapter 20. John chapter 20 verse 19. Just wanted one verse. Then that same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, wherein the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Yahshua and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Sound like to me, they went and fled and hid and forsook because of, of what happened to the Lord, right? What happened to the king, they went and hid because of fear of the Jews. When you forsake the cities and flee because you would be in fear. Come on back to 1 Samuel 31. Verse 8. And it came to pass on the morrow when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent it to the land of the Philistines round about to publish it in the house of their idols. And among the people and they put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth, and listen what they did, and they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. Hung him up. Hung him up. And the valiant men arose and went all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of the sons from the wall of Bethshan and came to Jabesh and burnt them there. And he took their bones and buried them under a tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. So after they took and hung this man's body up, it says some men came and took it down. Look at Isaiah chapter 9 about them cutting off his head. We won't look at 2 Samuel chapter 1 tonight. We need to go back and finish the Jeremiah 12. Thank the Lord. Just a little understanding, that's all. Just a little understanding. Isaiah chapter 9, verse, th verse 13. For the people turn not unto him that smite them, neither do they seek y'all hope. God be slapping y'all upside the head. You still don't turn to him who's slapping the fire about you. Therefore, y'all will cut off from Israel, head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, the ancient and honorable, the ancient and honorable, he is the head. The prophet that teach lies, he is the tail. 
For the leaders of this people cause them the air, and they that are led of them are destroyed. That's why we sit back telling you, these niggas want you to go fight, want you to go war, want you to go do this here. The people that lead these people, they cause you the air, you going to hell. And you still listen to these niggas. Listen to what he said. Listen to what he said now. This is why you wonder if these niggas want you to protest, do all this here. Look what y'all say. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. Neither shall he have mercy on their fathers and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer. And every mouth speak folly. For his anger is, is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. Now sit back and look at back what he said. He said he cut off the head of Saul. He said he would cut off from Israel, which would be Yahshua, head and tail. The ancient and honorable is the head. Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. Let's see if he's the ancient and the honorable. And he cut him off. Cut him off and hung him up. And we don't want to be cut off and hung up that we might be honored with it. Man said if we suffer with him, we'll be glorified with it. See the see, see the Lord got to die with him. You seen that there? The armor bearer died with him. Say so we'll die with him. Back him up to fifteen. Well, we got to look at 12 just so we see who we're talking about. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, because he's ancient. And by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the assembly, who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and he is the honorable. Cut off the head. He told you, he said, the tail is the false prophet that tell lies. You see, with Saul, they cut off his head. He was saying, letting you know, the leader of the people, I'm going to kill him. Lord, have mercy. Jeremiah chapter 12. I had something else. I'm going to come back with it another day. Paul brought this to mind when he was asking me a question about this during the week. I can't even fit it in. I could fit it in. I think I can. Thank the Lord. I will be able to fit it in when I start working in Jeremiah chapter 12. Thank the Lord. I'll be able to fit it in. Thank the Lord. I'll be able to fit it in. And now you see how the people dealt treacherously? And they thought they were good. Well, we stop there. We stop at verse 2. But we'll read verse 1 again just on general principle. we got to work our way down about verse 10. Righteous art thou, O Yah, when I plead with thee, yet, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgment. Wherefore do the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore all they happy that deal very treacherously? Thou planted them, yea, they have taken root. They grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. But thou art near in their mouth and far from their reign. Now we didn't finish the Matthew 13 with the weed and the tear, but he told you when he come back, he would take the weed in his ball and he would take the tears and the angels would take them and cast them in a furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Because he said he planted them both. Oh, man. Oh, man. We don't want to be them tears now. He said, but thou, O y'all, know me, thou hast seen me. And tried my heart towards thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. Prepare them for the day of the slaughter. That's why he said prepare slaughter for his children. That they do not possess the inhabitants of the earth. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. For in righteousness he shall judge and make war. He said how long shall the land mourn? And the herbs of every field wither. For the wickedness of them that dwell therein. The beasts are consumed. And the birds. Because he said, they said, he shall not see our last end. 
if thou hast run with footmen, they have wearied thee. Then how can he said, Then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trust, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? Listen to what he says. For even thy brethren, for even thy brethren, and the house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously with thee. Yea, they have called a multitude after thee. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. John chapter 1 verse 10. He said, even thy brethren of the house of thy father have dealt treacherously with thee. John chapter 1 verse 10. He came unto his own. I'm sorry, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. And for those of y'all who weren't on that Wednesday night, but Wednesday night, then we read in 1 John 3 and 1, he said, Beloved, we are called the sons of God, and the world know us not because it knew him not. So if the world still know you, that means you're not a son of God. And don't think that the world don't know you because you're around here talking about some Christmas and some Easter and some Thanksgiving and eat, don't eat no swine and a Sabbath day. They should not be able to look at you and see somebody who dwell in the world, who seek after the world, who concern with worldly affairs. Second Timothy chapter two. We still hold in Jeremiah twelve. We deal with that multitude. I know y'all already know what it is. Second Timothy chapter two. Ain't the Lord good? He is magnificent, great in glory. Blessed forever be Him. 2 Corinthians chapter, I mean 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in the Messiah Yahshua. But y'all be strong in the gift of God. God will God allow y'all to be partakers of my gift. Be strong in the gift that He given us. The gift He done gave to me and to give unto y'all. It's the gift of everlasting life. Be strong in it. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That's why he telling Timothy this, because Timothy a teacher. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahshua the Messiah. No man that war entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Some of y'all can't please. Now we ain't talking about just the teaching of the word. Some of y'all can't please the man who chose you to be a soldier because you're so worried about this life. How you gonna be worn after worn after God when He say this is not our, our, our warfare is not carnal, but spiritual, and y'all around here worn after things of the flesh, still worrying about what's going on in the world. You ain't gonna be able to make it like that. Now come over here, Jeremiah twelve, one more time. You're not gonna be able to make it like that. So let's sit back and look at it. They dealt treacherously. They called the multitude. He said they don't believe him when they spake fair. We already know he called the army. Judas got an army to get him. And he said, hell, master. Right? Y'all know this. We already read in John chapter 11 how the man sat back to kill him. You see how it tied right back to us dealing treacherously departing from our husband. Went right back. Well, you got some little spectacles. You don't pull them out often. They're working well for you there. They're not working well for you? Yeah, they're working well for you there, Lord. Oh, well, they're not working well for you. Verse 7. Verse 7. Listen to what he says. I have forsaken my house. I have forsaken my house. I have forsaken my house. I have left my heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemy. Hebrew chapter 3. Let's see who his house is. You know, a heritage is an inheritance, right? We just read who his heritage was in Colossians chapter 1, did we not? So Yahshua is his, is his heritage, right? So let's look at Hebrews 3. He said he forsook his house. Then we're going to look at John chapter 2. And when I ask all the questions, see who remembers. Hebrew chapter 3. Verse 1. Thank the Lord for the word. Everybody cool? Everybody all right? I hope somebody learned something. 
They were foreclosed as brethren, partakers of the heavenly call, considering the apostle and high priest of our profession, the Messiah, Yahshua, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who had built the house had more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses truly was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken after. But the Messiah has a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast to confidence in the rejoicing of hope firm unto the end. Because he said he the head of the synagogue, right? And we know that he is the tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. John chapter 2. I didn't want to be, so that means he forsook it out. These stupid niggas think they're talking about the literal temple. That's why I tell you, go to leave them niggas alone. John, yeah, you know what I'm saying? John chapter 2, verse 17. Man, you got a better chance winning the debate with a dog. A lot of these dogs, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to tell y'all something. They go to everybody, the men first, because you women ain't got no business going back and forth with nobody, no way. A lot of these dudes, they don't want to know. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to know the word. They really don't want to know it. Some of y'all, some of y'all who hear the sound of my voice right now, really don't want to hear the word. You just want to do something. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm be, I'm gonna be honest and be real with you. Save your soul. We beseech you by the mercies of the living God. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Stop sitting around here playing with your life. Why would you think? Why would you think Peter tell you to, to save yourself from this untoward generation, this rebellious, contrary people, and you retarded niggas still want to be fooled up with? As if for uh, because of some magical reason, because they gonna love you so much, they gonna want to love God too. They don't. Guess what? I'm gonna tell you right now. Somebody love God, don't love God ain't no way in the world they gonna love you. Ain't nowhere in the world. If somebody content and cool with you committing sin, they do not love you. Over rebuke it better than secret love. Guess what? I tell you nigga about yourself straight to your face because I love you. Some of y'all can't take it. You don't like it when I when I tell you stuff. Some of you will kick and fight, catch all manner of attitude. I tell you because I love you. Some of y'all feel like you can't even come tell me nothing. I like this here. That's what I'm here for. Some of y'all are going to make rash and just retarded, stupid decisions that don't even have enough common sense. Well, God done gave me somebody to teach me the word. Maybe I should run it past him before I go do this here. Some of y'all ain't even got enough common sense to do that because you don't want me to nine times out of ten because you don't want me to tell you something you don't want to hear. Or tell me for me or me to tell you not to do something that you want to do. Then when you go ahead and make a mess, you come back around here and tell me about it, and I could have saved you from all that before you even went and did it. I don't know how some of y'all can sit back and realize I got a man sunk by God to teach me the word before I make a decision. If I ain't 100% sure about it, maybe I should run it past him first before I do it. But would that make sense to you? Lamar? Let me run it past him before I do this here. Let me get his counsel on the matter before I go do it. But the reason why a lot of y'all won't do that is because it's something you want to do and you think he might tell me not to do it. I don't want to. I don't want him to tell me not to do something that I want to do. So I ain't going to ask him. And that's why you're going to go to hell. Not because you're not running stuff past me, but your mind frame is dangerous. You sit back and you look at all the people in time past. They sat back and they said, let us inquire of the man of God before we go do something. Don't get me read about them doing that type of stuff. Let's go see the man of God get counsel from the man of God before I go do something. Y'all don't have enough sense to go do that. You know what I'm talking about? Because I might say, you know what, I could think on the matter, you know, you know what, I'm going to get back with you. Or the Lord might just say, I'll let you know, hey, do what you ought to do. Because y'all don't consider, y'all think that I'm telling you this stuff from my own heart when the man told you I don't judge after the flesh. But if I judge, my judgment is true. So if, I, so if I'm telling you something, I'm not doing it after no call or way of thinking. I'm telling you this here from the man who I get my judgment from so you don't make a bad decision. But y'all don't have enough common sense to think that way. 
Because some of y'all more worried about how I view you and what I'm going to say to you when you don't even realize when you do stuff like that, I already look at you and be like, that nigga's stupid. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to have somebody be able to go get kind of books say there's safety in a multitude of counselors. But y'all will go ask some sinners and some retarded people what to do first. But that's y'all. Y'all so do what you want. John chapter 2 verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What signs show thou unto us, seeing thou do these things? Yahshua answered and said unto him, Destroy this temple, because I have forsaken my house, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty-six years was this temple and building. Wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. I forsook my house. Now who does take us back to who told us about him rebuilding a house? What prophet told you about rebuilding a house? Any of y'all remember what prophet told you about rebuilding the house? Amos told you that he would rebuild the ruins of the tabernacle of David and said it was as in the days old. Huh? Come on out here and look at it, Amos 9 and 9 so nobody remembers. Mm -hmm. Nobody remembers. Let's go on around here and look at it. See, you wasn't, with, you wasn't around there with a gold when we did. And I know I, when we went through it, I didn't name the video after it, even if, if it was on video. I don't remember if it's on video or not, to be honest. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Father, glorify thou me with the glory I had with you before the world war, because the ancient and honorable, I'll cut his head off. I'll cut off the ancient. Say, I'll cut off the head and the tail of Israel. And the head is the ancient and the honorable. And this is my house that I've forsaken and my heritage. I give it into the hand of our enemies. For the Son of Man shall be given into the hand of sinners. Ain't that what he said? These were his enemies. He came unto his own. His own received him not. Even thy brethren, even thy brethren dealt treacherously with thee. Jeremiah chapter 12. Thank God for understanding. He said he left his heritage. And what did his heritage say on the tree? We already read it. A voice crying out in a high place. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So when we look at verse 8, My heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It cried out against me, therefore have I hated it. So guess what? Yahshua cried out to him, right? We already read about it. He said, I hated it. He turned his back on his own son. He said, my inheritance, which I love, I avoid it. For that time period, he said, if anybody come upon you, and come back to Genesis 4 with, this, with, with, with Cain. Come on back to Genesis. It's all tied in together. It's all the same word. The man is in the volume of every word. Listen, look at Genesis 4 one more time. Probably about verse 14. He said, you driven me out this day from the face of the earth. From the face shall I be here. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond. It will come to pass. Everyone that find me shall kill me. Y'all said, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. He set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And we don't sit back. Like I mentioned to you, we sit back and look at all the times that they wanted to kill a man. And he didn't allow him to do it. What he kept saying, it's not his hour. It's not his hour. It's not his hour. You know what I'm talking about? But he turned around, they seen the mark on the man, they seen the signs that he made. Then he said that I set a mark on that means it'll be a sign for you know not to do this. They asked and said, What sign do you show us all these things that you do? He said, I'm gonna ride from the dead in three days. They said, Well, how are you gonna rebuild the temple? They didn't know you were talking about his body. They missed the sign, killed him, digits coming on him sevenfold. Back to Jeremiah chapter two. Verse 9, he said, My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. 
Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourned unto me. The whole land is made desolate because no man lay it to heart. Now, you know, a lot of Israelites, you see that thing with that speckled bird. And they say that means Israel coming all different shades of brown. But he said his heritage is unto him as a speckled bird. Now, we not establish his heritage as Yahshua by Colossians chapter 1. And y'all know what speckled means, right? Y'all know what it means to be speckled, right? No, nah, many different colors, though, right? Like a speckled bird got many different colors, right? The way we read something in this book about something having many different colors. Joseph. What, can, what did he have of many different colors? A coat. Then we read how they put a scarlet robe on the Lord. Let's look at something here in Luke chapter, uh, Mark chapter 16. We read about the scarlet. I know I told y'all keep that in mind. It's Mark chapter 15. Let me see the verse that I want. Let me look at about verse 11. For the chief priest moved the people, and he should rather release Barabbas unto them. Well, let me drop down. That's a little too high. Verse 16. And the soldiers led him away into the hall and called Rhetorium. And they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and platted a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail, king of the Jews. They smote him on the head with a reed and did spit on him, bowed their knees and worshipped him. And when they mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put on his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Who remembers who else had a purple robe on? Anybody remember? Who else had a purple robe put on? Who remember? Mordecai. So you see this man, he put a scarlet robe on him, right? Then a purple robe. Then he put his clothes on him. That sounds like a coat of many colors, right? Because he had his own coat on too. It mean he'd be a speckled bird. but he had many different colors on him. Then he said, gather up all the beasts of the field so they could devour him. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4. I mean Mark 14 because we right here. Ain't even no need to go nowhere. Mark 14 verse 41. And he come the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayed me is at hand. And immediately while he yet spake, come Judas, one of the twelve, and with a great multitude, with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same as he taken, and lead him away safely. And he, soon as he was come, he go straightway to him and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. So when we go back and look at Jeremiah chapter 12, we got one more place that I'm going to let y'all go. And we look at Jeremiah chapter 12. Let me get that. So when we look at Jeremiah chapter 12, and this man says, when a multitude come after thee, and they speak fair, don't believe him not. You know y'all sure wasn't believing what Judah said. Then when we look at this here, his heritage being unto a speck of birds, all the birds round about him were against him. All the people round about him was against him. And they came to devour him. The Son of Man been given into the hands of sinners, and these pastors destroyed his vineyard. Matthew 23. Man, these people around here playing games. People around here talking about that, talking about some color. Can't be that stupid. Man, they around here talking about no shades of brown. I don't see the Messiah and all of that. That was a clear day. The precept that come out their butthole. Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. They done destroyed his vineyard. Now listen to what the Lord said. But what want to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither you suffer ye them that are entering to go in. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall you receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you come to see and land and make one proselyte. And when he's made, you make him two for, make him two for more the child of hell than yourselves. That's why it don't pay to listen to no false prophet. You're going to be twice as worse than he is. But don't that sound like they were destroying his vineyard? Luke 10 and 30. This still tie into Jeremiah, whether you know it or not. Luke 10 and 30. Ain't that amazing though? We sit back and look at it that Yahshua was Cain and Abel at the same time. Mm-mm-mm. That, that wild, right? That wild, ain't it? Not even if you try it. A lot of people do it. They fail though. Luke 10 and 30. And Yahshua answering, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Then these people take, we just read how he took the man out of clothes him. And took his clothes. And we already read how they wounded him, right? Remember how Jose says the thieves are robbers laying wait, so do the priests. With murder by consent in the way. Because they were trying to say this man was going to take our place and nation. This man was telling these people a parable about them, by himself. He said by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite when he was at that place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. All the scribes and the Pharisees sat there and looked at him and went and looked the other way. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to those, and said unto them, Take care of him. Whatsoever thou spend more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now which now of these think thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? He said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Yahshua unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Do you see how he said he poured oil and wine in their wounds? Because the father poured the Ruach HaKodesh in this man when he was wounded for our transgressions and raised him from the dead that we might get the victory. Lord, we are looking at this in greater detail. But I just had to put that in your mind to cause you to think about it, little son. Because he was giving them people a parable. He was giving them a parable about himself. We just sat back and read in Jeremiah 12 how these people ran about him to steal from his heritage. And it was the same priest who took the man, stripped him of his clothes, and wounded him. John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and there they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that come from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, of whom ye trust. But had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote with me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Hallelujah for Yahshua for the word. Y'all understood all this stuff?